Hey yo, what is up Thrill Seekers? Today I am here to talk about the new season pass system coming to all Six Flags parks. Specifically, I'm going to be talking about the new Fiesta Texas passes just because the pricing is a little bit different for each Six Flags park. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the new benefits and how they compare to the memberships that we had before, as well as what this means for you, what this means for the company, and just overall getting my opinions on it. Before we super get into it, I do just want to quickly apologize for like not uploading at all for the past while. Um, I'm a junior in high school, which is arguably one of the hardest years, and I've been super busy with theater stuff. I'm a dance teacher. Uh, I, of course, work at Six Flags Fiesta Texas, um, so I've been doing the weekends there and then just shuffling around with a whole bunch of stuff during the week. So I've had like no time to actually go to the park and make vlogs. That's why really the only videos that you've been seeing are construction updates. That will be changing pretty soon. I am going to be cutting down on my hours at Six Flags Fiesta Texas in terms of working there, both to have a lot more time for myself, but also to have time to actually have fun and like go to the park. Um, both Six Flags Fiesta Texas, as well as going to SeaWorld, Six Flags Over Texas, and some of the Houston parks as well, which I actually have never been to, so. With that, I'll probably end up making it around once a month, um, and I'll hopefully be able to film two or more videos as I'm at the park. Those will be, you know, spin the wheel challenges, uh, decide my day, um, like crowd level checks and updates as well as hide and seek videos. I don't know, just random fun stuff at the park, right? Me just hanging out with my friends and doing crazy stuff and then filming it for you guys' as entertainment. So look out for those coming a little bit more frequently, um, hopefully like every other weekish, ish um, And then of course, every week, I will still have those Dr. Diabolical's cliffhanger construction updates, as well as updates like this because I haven't really been doing theme park updates, even though my channel name is Theme Park Update. So, gonna gonna do more of this. Anyways, let's jump right into it and take a look at these passes and the benefits that they offer compared to the memberships. Alrighty, guys. So we are now here at the Six Flags Fiesta Texas website and looking at the new passes that are available. First, let's just go over the prices and how those compare to the memberships, and then we can go through all of the benefits and how those have differed. So first off, we're gonna look at the Thrill Seeker Pass, which I am going to be comparing to the gold membership from the membership system. Um, the gold membership was about $7 per month, which ends up being $84 in the year, versus the Thrill Seeker Pass, which is $79.99. So, they're basically the same price. There's not really much difference there um, in terms of comparing that to a one-day ticket. One-day ticket being $35, which, by the way, super, super, super cheap for a an amusement park. I mean, SeaWorld is about 45. Cedar Fair is usually somewhere around the 70s. Um, Disney and Universal are in the 100s, so definitely super cheap. Um, but comparing that to a one-day ticket, um, the season pass is about equivalent to two day trips if you include parking. So if you go twice or more in a year, then this Thrill Seeker Pass is definitely worth it. Second, we have the 2022 Extreme Pass. This is a step up from the Thrill Seeker Pass, and of course, it's a little bit more expensive. I'm going to be comparing this to the Diamond Plan from the membership system before. Um, the membership was about $12 a month, which comes out to about $144 in the year. It was a little bit more than that, but that's a ballpark estimate. Um, and then the Extreme Pass is just a little bit more than that at about $170 per year. Comparing that price to the one-day ticket, it's about as much as four and a half, five-ish visits. So if you go more than five times or four times, then that Extreme Pass is going to be worth it. Finally, we have the Ultimate Pass. I'm going to be comparing this to the highest tier membership, which was Diamond Elite. Diamond Elite was about 18-ish dollars every month, which comes out to about $216 um, for the year. So the Ultimate Pass is definitely a little bit more expensive, 
but you do get a lot of a lot of benefits with this pass so i'll be going through that in a second and of course, comparing that price to a one-day ticket, it's about, about nine-ish uh, visits um, before that membership will pay off. So if you go once a month or more, then this Ultimate Pass will be worth it. From here, I'm just going to compare all of the benefits from these new season passes to the benefits of their membership counterparts. I'm actually on the Six Flags Magic Mountain website for this, just because it offers a little bit better of a summary of the benefits for some reason than the Six Flags Fiesta Texas one, which just has like a weird graph. So that's why I'm on here. First off, with the Thrill Seeker Pass, um, the first downside that we see comparing that to the Gold Membership is that the Thrill Seeker Pass is only valid for admission at the park that it is purchased at. For most of the general public, this isn't really an issue, but if you're someone who does have the opportunity of going to multiple Six Flags parks in a year, um, then the Thrill Seeker Pass does kind of have that caveat um, and just saying that you can only visit the Six Flags Park that you bought the pass from, unlike the gold membership where you can visit any Six Flags Park. The second main downside going from the membership system to this new season pass system is that the Thrill Seeker Pass does have some blockout dates. If you don't know, blockout dates are just days that you cannot go to the park just using your pass and you would have to just buy a regular day ticket in order to go that day. We see this on Disney and Universal passes, but we haven't really seen it with Six Flags yet. Assuming that the Six Flags Magic Mountain blockout dates are the same as Six Flags Fiesta Texas, it's only uh, Saturdays during Fright Fest. So not super extensive, but if you really, really like going to Fright Fest on Saturdays for some reason, then you cannot anymore with the Thrill Seeker Pass. Honestly, I think this is kind of a smart move by Six Flags, just trying to limit the amount of people in the park during those crazy crowded Fright Fest days and moving the season pass people to different days so that they can kind of spread out the crowd level versus having just a massive crowd um, one day of the week. So especially since they're going to be open Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday now during Fright Fest, it's definitely a good way to kind of spread it out instead of just having everyone be miserable on Saturdays. The upside from the gold membership to this pass is that you do get one skip the line pass every single time you go. So you can skip the line on one ride every time you go. In the membership system, this didn't start until the diamond pass, which is about the equivalent to the extreme pass with this new system here. So about double the price. Um, so definitely an advantage there is you get a skip the line pass. Those come in handy a lot. So definitely milk that. Second up on the list, we have the extreme pass. This, like I said earlier, is comparable to the diamond pass in the membership system before. First off, just acknowledging that there are no blockout dates and you can go to any Six Flags park you want with this. So if those are two things that are important for you, Extreme Pass is where it's at. But we do kind of see a little bit of a trade-off, if you will, um, from this pass to the Diamond Pass. First, we see a lowering in the discounts. The Diamond Pass had, I believe, a 35% discount on merchandise and I believe 25% on food. Uh, correct me in the comments if I'm wrong versus this new Extreme Pass, which only has 25% on merchandise and 15% on food. The upside though is the Diamond Pass only gives you one skip the line pass every time you visit versus this new Extreme Pass, which gives you two. I know that on the screen right now, it says weekday visits, but that's because it's Six Flags Magic Mountain, which is open every single day and the entire year. So um, they are actually open during the week. I'm assuming that that's not gonna transfer to Fiesta, Texas, and it'll just be any visit. And finally, last but not least, we have the Ultimate Pass. We actually see the exact same trade-off with this um, as we did with the Extreme Pass in terms of a lower discount, but more skip the lines. 
The diamond pl uh, plan in the membership system had a 50% discount on merchandise and 35% on food. Again, correctly if I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure I'm right, maybe. Um, versus this, which is 30% off and 20% off. The upside, though, is that you get five Skip the Line passes every single time you visit. So if you're a coaster enthusiast um, and you like to travel around and you maybe have one day at a Six Flags park and you're trying to get all the coaster credits, right, ride all of the rides, these five Skip the Line passes are going to make a huge difference in your visit. Honestly, five Skip the Line passes basically eliminates the need for you to buy a uh, flash pass for the day. And a flash pass can be anywhere from 60 to $130, depending on what level you get. So having that type of like thing that you may need to buy before, having that be completely gone is definitely a huge money saver. And of course, I have to talk about the dining plan. One of the biggest downsides of this new pass is that we do not see the return of the unlimited dining plan or the monthly, I guess, dining plan. If you guys didn't know, Six Flags used to have this plan where you would pay around 10-ish dollars a month and you could get one meal and a snack every single time you visited or two meals and a snack every time you visited depending on what level you get but with this new plan we see a different system in place instead of that we see basically a plan where you can pay for a certain amount of meals so 10 meals comes with the ultimate pass and then one day of free meals comes with the extreme pass. If you want to purchase more meals than you can, 10 meals ends up costing you $80. Four meals additionally costs you $40. Now just saying, this may sound bad, um, but it's really only compared to how spoiled we were before. I mean, $80 for 10 meals, that's $8 a meal, plus you get a drink included with that. Uh, normally, a meal and a drink will cost you $15 for the meal and $10 for the drink. Um, yeah, no, $5 for the drink. They're, they're, not, they're not that that expensive. That would be insane. So having a $20 thing cost $8 is still huge. Um, I'm just kind of, that, that's been something that everyone's like really been beating Six Flags up on is like, where's the dining plan? Like, dude, we were getting so insanely spoiled with that. Um, plus, if you guys didn't see, there was a news article where someone basically ate at Six Flags Magic Mountain like every single day. Um, and they ended up getting like, a ton of food for like super super cheap so that's probably one of the things that they realized people were doing which I mean I was doing that I always went in and like bought super got got a whole bunch of meals since I had the dining plan so it makes sense that they're getting rid of this and it is still a really really good system I mean eight dollars for a twenty dollar thing eight dollars for a twenty dollar thing that's still really good chill. Overall though, definitely you can see that the benefits aren't quite as high. Um, you can see that the discounts specifically are not quite as high. Um, it seems like Six Flags is just trying to save as much money as possible and not just give it all away. Um, it seems like they realized that they were maybe underpricing um, or over discounting some of their items like merchandise and food to people with memberships and dining plans and seems like they're starting to cut back on that because it started to lose them money for sure now overall what does this mean for you and what does this mean for the company they're kind of intertwined a little bit anyone who right now has a membership can still use that membership until it expires so if you just bought a membership like yesterday don't worry, you can still use that membership all the way up until it expires a year from yesterday. 
Whenever your membership does eventually expire though, you will have to, of course, get one of these new passes. Now, even though this pass system is a little bit more expensive, um, and it is has a little bit less benefits than the old one, you can see that as a sign that the company is going to be changing. First off, let me just clarify that Six Flags is still 100% the discount chain. I touched on this a little bit earlier, but stuff like Cedar Fair, SeaWorld, Universal, Disney are still way, way, way more expensive than Six Flags is. I mean, $80 for a season pass to a, six, uh, to a park is extremely, extremely cheap for something as big as Six Flags. If you compare that to something like Cedar Point, for example, a day ticket is $80. So you get one day at Cedar Point for the same amount of money as basically unlimited visits to Six Flags Fiesta, Texas. But by Six Flags making their prices just a little bit more expensive, we do see a massive improvement um, in terms of the quality of their parks already. I'm really fortunate to have Six Flags Fiesta Texas be my home park as we can kind of see that it has been the testing ground for this new business model in the past couple years. The first thing that really set it off was the Poltergeist re-theme. We see a lot of Six Flags parks starting to touch up their theming, starting to add new elements, basically make their parks look a little bit better than just plopping a whole bunch of cloned rides in a big plot of land. Stuff like Dr. Diabolical's cliffhanger is definitely a big step forward for Six Flags um, in terms of kind of investing in bigger and better rides. Overall, we see Six Flags starting to change their business model just a little bit. Um, they still see a big success in being the discount chain, um, and that is why they haven't really changed the price of their basic season pass, and they also haven't changed the price of their day tickets. But they see their opportunity to make a little bit more money and then spend it in order to get bigger, better attractions, better theming, and just overall create a better atmosphere that people actually want to come back to. Think about it, them making more money means they can make more investment into the park, meaning people, more people will want to go to the park, meaning they make more money, which then means that they get more investments into the park, meaning more people want to go. And it's kind of just a cycle like that. Right now, we're starting to see the beginnings of it, right? They need to increase prices in order to get that initial wave of money so that they can make that investment. Honestly, I support Six Flags 100%, and I'm not saying that just because, oh, I work there and whatever. If Six Flags did something wrong, trust me, I will call them out. But with this, I actually kind of support it. Seems like Six Flags is starting to step up their game in a lot of different areas, and I think that we should be supporting them as they do it. Anyways, that's my take on the new Six Flags Fiesta Texas and Six Flags in general season pass system that they are unveiling in 2022. If you have any questions, comments, arguments, concerns, anything that you want to say at all, definitely put it in the comments below and I will be responding to a whole bunch of them. Also, look out for more vlogs, fun videos like spin the wheel and decide my day and hide and seek, just a whole bunch of super fun stuff coming on this channel super soon, as well as more construction updates now that Dr. Diabolical's cliffhanger has gone vertical. Definitely make sure to subscribe, like, comment, share, turn on that, on that notif- Ugh. Turn on that notification bell so that you get notified every single time I upload, and yeah. I'll see you guys all next time. Peace out.